Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Welcome everyone to the September 16, 2021 monthly school board meeting. We can pray with you. Dear Grace and Heavenly Father, we're so thankful this day you made. We thank you for all that you do. And we ask you to be with all of our students and staff, Lord. We pray that you'll keep them all safe and out of harm's way. And we pray that you'll bless all those with this COVID, remove it from our county, from all the individuals that it's uh, affecting. And the RSB, we pray that you get that out of our schools too. And we pray that you'll guide and direct us. We'd be good stewards of everything we're in charge of. And we'll give you praise for all that you do. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. 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 schools provide students with the skills, knowledge, and support to achieve excellence and become lifelong learners. All right, you have your agenda in front of you. I need a motion and a second. Approve the agenda. I'll make a motion. Okay. We have a second. All in favor? Uh, no, sir, not tonight. All right. We right. have, have had an opportunity to look at your consent agenda. And a motion and a second. Approve it. I'll make a motion. We have a motion. I'll second. We have a second. Any comments? All in favor? Okay. Well, in front of you, you have a, a much shorter personnel report. Yeah, definitely a little better uh, this month compared to last. You know, obviously the school going on, there's not as much hiring taking place. More substitutes than anything else, so definitely much shorter this month. Oh, so you're viewing over. Okay, report. <coughs> You should have before you the uh, report for the month of August. In the second column, we begin the month with a general ledger balance of $24,882,806.52, total revenue of $3,571,752.77. Expenditures of five million seven sixty six four hundred fifty two, bringing us to a general ledger balance of twenty two million six eighty eight one fifty eight seventy seven. On the bank side, we began with twenty five million six twenty four four seventy six eighty eight. Our total deposits and other credits three million four eighty eight seven zero eight thirty seven. Our checks and other debits total four million six eighty four one seventy one twenty one. <coughs> Less our outstanding checks brings us to a reconciled balance of twenty-two million six eighty-eight one fifty-eight seventy-seven. And there again, the biggest majority of the uh, increase year over year is the construction uh, bond proceeds that we are still spending down on. So, any questions about the report? Thank you. working budget totals about $63.6 million, which is about $300,000 increase over last year's budget. The general fund contingency, about $12.4 million, which is 39%. Our state on behalf payments are uh, budgeted to be $9.3 million, same as last year. And total salary and benefits, $34.2 million, which is down from $37.3 million budgeted in the previous year. The uh, total debt service payments are increased a little bit this year versus last year because we did have additional bonds uh, <coughs> that were issued, so um, that's why the debt is going up. 
Last year it was 1.57 million and it's going up to 1.78 million. But all that is in within the limitations that we're allowed to uh, um, to pay. You know, of course, with uh, with excess left over. On the next page, you'll see the general fund revenues that are broken down on that pie chart. The uh, largest of which on the revenue side is our SEEK allotment that we received from the state. That's about 40% of the revenue budget. And um, on behalf payments are about 20% from the state. Our beginning balance makes up 22%. On the expense side for the general fund, the instruction, of course, as you would expect, is the largest percentage of the expenses at 39%. And uh, operations and maintenance, 10%. Transportation, 7%. And our contingency of 26%. <coughs> On the next page, uh, just breaks down that total expense number of 47.6 million down into the different um, categories, kind of slices that expense and looks at it in a different manner from what the previous uh, pie chart showed. Of course, the uh, largest expense category is our salary and benefits, which makes up about 62% of the expense budget. And there again, the contingency, 26%. For the salary and benefits, if we drill down into that just a little bit further, you can see the breakdown between the certified and classified staff as well as the on behalf share of the expense, certified being 41% and classified being 18%, on behalf 31%. So the total salary and benefits 29.3 million. On the next page, you'll see a breakout of uh, the grants, local, state, and federal. The top section first is the local grants, some of the larger ones you see listed, and then there's an aggregate total of uh, several of the smaller ones that, uh, that we didn't list out here, but certainly we provide any detail on that that you would like to see. So about $412,000 in local, local grants and donations. State grants totaling about $1.6 million. <coughs> That's holding really close and steady from what we saw last year. Um, and then federal grants are uh, 3.2 million expected to be for this year. Last year it was 2.9 million and that is excluding the, um, the ESSER funds from, from the federal level. The uh, only two that are actually categorized in fiscal year 22 are um, some IDEA special ed uh, grant dollars that were awarded this year and you can see those listed uh, about two hundred and sixty thousand dollars total so altogether uh, local state federal grants uh, about five almost five point three million dollars on the next page is just that same five point three million dollars that is just sliced differently and presented to you to show you the breakdown in the category of expenses, um, showing the salaries, which are a little over $3 million of that total. Benefits, $725,000. Um, and you can see the other categories listed below that. Salaries make up about 58%, and benefits about 14%. On the next page, you'll see um, the funds 21, which we, which is referred to as the district activity funds, and this is um, a lot of just the schools' activities, such as library, their book fairs. Um, it includes revenue from their school fees, pictures, and our athletic programs. So that is all budgeted to be about $734,000. Last year, it was $706,000. Of course, with COVID, those activities were down a little bit. So, um, so we are hoping that that will bump back up this year. On the next page, you'll see the capital outlay building fund and the debt service funds. <coughs> And those are all aggregate. Um, you can see the total revenues of just a little over $2.5 million. And the majority of that comes from the state and uh, comes through the seat calculation. 
about $1.5 million in order to receive what we receive in the building fund and capital outlay, we have to contribute $575,000 from our property tax revenue. Then the debt service that is um, a portion that comes in in the SFCC, a little under $340,000. And then fund transfer is $104,000 that comes from the general fund to uh, fund those uh, debt service payments that are required to come out of the general fund. So you can see the total expenditures, um, $2.5 million. And then we plan to have a little bit left over, about $63,000. We will also plan to request a capital, uh, capital funds request for $380,000 that would contribute towards property insurance for the district and buses. The bottom section of that report also just gives you a listing of all of the outstanding bond issues that we will be paying debt service on during this fiscal year. It gives you the beginning balances of that, that debt, which is $21.182 million. Principal payments would total $1,591,000. Interest, 532200 And with subtracting the principal uh, payments toward that debt balance, that would bring us at the end of FY22 at uh, 19.59 million. On the next page is a summary of the food service budget for the year. That budget is uh, starting with a beginning balance of just under 2.5 million, with total revenue of 3 million, uh, 3.25 million coming from local, state, and federal sources. <coughs> So total budget of 5.7 million, and you can see the salary and benefits totaling almost 1.7 million, and uh, supplies, which is the food, um, is 1.3 million, and then the uh, 2.4 million in the 0800 debt service and miscellaneous that includes the contingency or carry forward that makes up the the components of that number. <coughs> So there again, about 5.7 million for food service. That concludes the report. Are there any questions? Thank you very much. Motion to approve the FY 22 working budget. I'll make motion. Motion and second. All in favor? Carried. All right, for the COVID-19 plan. The COVID-19 plan is something that Senate Bill 1, which was re recently passed, requires, as well as the uh, Kentucky Department of Education. Uh, the plan has to be submitted to KDE, uh, supposedly by the end of the week, so that we can also upload it on our district website. The plan that you have before you is basically the very similar to the plan that has been on Facebook twice already this year with a bulleted list of procedures that will be implemented for school to occur. Uh, the plan does include a statement that masks will be required to be worn while inside school building and buses. I know that there's been a lengthy discussion and it's a very debated topic about masks. However, mask wearing does reduce the number of students that have to be quarantined on a daily basis. With universal masking, we're able to use a three-fit rule, which we can maintain in classes and, and not have to contact trace very often. Without universal masking, that becomes six feet, and we'd be sending at least more than, at least twice, if not more than that, the number of students home under quarantine. It's not a decision, as you know, as I've discussed with each of you personally and individually, it's not a decision that any of you or I take lightly. We've we surveyed parents, we've surveyed staff, we've spoken to local and regional medical providers, we've spoken with the health department, we've reviewed the CDC guidelines as well as the Kentucky Department of Public Health recommendations, and we've also looked at and utilized our local COVID incident map. You know, Ohio County is not in a great place at the moment, according to the incident map. We will continue to monitor our local data, and if our conditions improve at some point in time during the school year, 
and we feel like we're at a level where masks are no longer needed, then I would certainly recommend to you that would be the case, that we reevaluate that option. But I don't feel that's where we're at at this time. I, we, are committed to doing whatever it takes, whatever is necessary to keep our kids in school, in person. We owe it to our kids to do that. We can't be out of school like we were last year. So we'll do whatever it takes to make sure in-person learning can continue. So it's my recommendation this evening that you would approve this COVID-19 plan as presented. That will be shared on the district website and it will also be submitted to the Kentucky Department of Education. All right, we have a recommendation from the superintendent. I need a motion and a second. I'll make a motion and accept it. And a second. A second. And a second. All in favor? Carried. All right. Approved 20 remote learning day. Also in Senate Bill 1, one of the things that was passed was 20 remote learning days. Now it's unique and different, not like the remote learning days we had last year. It can't be used for a district-wide shutdown to go remote. It can only be used for individual schools that have uh, COVID issues, whether it's staff, students, substitutes, whatever the case may be, just lack of staffing. Or it could even be a given, given grade level. Let's, let's say, for instance, in the third grade at school A, um, there's an outbreak and just a lot of sickness going on, then that particular grade level could go remote. In order to access these 20 days that Senate Bill 1 mentions, in order to get approval by KDE to use it, it takes board action, you all giving me authority to be able to utilize those 20 days at some point in time if we need them. So that's what this is tonight. It gives, it, it's you giving me the authority to evaluate those given situations and use up to remote learning days up to 20 times during the school year. So again, it's why it's if needed. So it'd be my recommendation that you'd approve those and that'd be another tool that we would have if we ever get to that point. All right, we have a recommendation from the superintendent. I need a motion and a second to approve it. I'll make the motion. I'll second. Have a motion and a second. All in favor? Motion okay. carried. Uh, Chapter, we have a request to speak? We do. First up is Laura Lloyd. All right, uh, you have five minutes. And yeah, that's me. Respect everybody. Correct. What else did you say? I said just we ask everyone to be respectful to everybody. Okay. <coughs> Hello. Um, I briefly spoke one other time. Mm -hmm. I'm Laura Lloyd, and um, I would have liked to have been at the other board meetings since the last one I attended. I think in July but my children had activities, so I haven't been able to attend. Um, I am the mother of a 16-year-old and 13-year-old boys, and um, I'm here tonight because there are many parents that would like for us to have the choice as to whether or not our children wear masks. And I know you've already made your decision. Um, a lot of us would like to know what the actual data showed from your survey. <clears throat> would you provide that to us? Sure, I'll tell you right now. Uh, parents were 53% in favor of optional, 47% were in favor of masking in one of the three varieties. Okay. Staff was 67% wanted masks, 33% wanted optional. Okay, and see, that's one thing that um, that a lot of us anticipated it would be. Um, I used to teach. Um, I've got health issues, and that's why I don't teach anymore. Um, I hadn't planned to speak until just a couple hours before the meeting, and I'll try really hard not to get emotional. Um, one thing that bothers a lot of people um, and I didn't include it on my poster, um, but one of the things that I believe most everybody can agree on, okay? Well, one thing I know we can agree on is that 
We want what's best for the children. And that's one reason I chose from being a chemist and a microbiologist, okay? That's what I used to do before I became a teacher. I know a lot about science, and I'm not being, I'm not trying to be arrogant. People that know me know I'm not arrogant. I'm all about doing anything I can to help anybody. I've been through many bad health problems since 2006. Um, so our number one goal is what's best for the children, okay? Yes, staff is very, very important. Very important. But we have to look at the children, okay? I don't think everybody's realizing how much a mask and all the fear programming is hurting our children. These are my views and many other parents' views. But many parents are afraid to speak up. Now, sometimes my... My, me being vocal is not a good thing, but from what I've been through all these years, I've chosen to be vocal because I've been led astray by many doctors. Many doctors were letting me die from many strokes because I had a blockage in my brain. They were just going to let me go. So I choose now to be vocal, okay? So one thing that I wanted to mention, is it okay if I move from this? Um, one thing I wanted to mention is that, okay, this is going to take more than five minutes, so i got to start. Um, so, I think we all probably know there's some censorship going on, okay? Can we all agree to that? Besides the fact we want what's best for our children. Truth is not being told on everything, okay? We need both sides of the story. We need both sides of the story. Now, Surgeons wear masks in surgery because they don't want liquid spilled on them or spewed on them, okay? They do not wear these masks that people are wearing. They do not wear them to keep viral particles from getting to them. That's not why they wear them, okay? It's not. I've done microbiology work for five years. I've done thousands of chemical analysis, thousands of microbial analysis. And if I still had access to a lab, I would love to take some of these masks and show you why a lot of kids are getting sick and why they're taking this crud that they're wiping they're all over their mask and they're taking it home to their families. That's one reason we have issues with RSV and all this other crud. Okay? How many children do you think are coming to school every day in a clean mask? How many? Okay? I don't even recall how many students we have now. I used to know when I was teaching here at the high school, but I don't know now. But how many do you think go to school every day with a clean mask? Not many. Okay? These are some things I, jotted, I tried to make really quick, and I can leave it with you. And I'm not trying to be ugly to anybody. I want truth. I love your all's children. I love my child. That's why, you know, I went from a lot bigger salary to a lot lower salary. You know, I want to help children just like you all. You all are here because you love children. That's why everybody loves children. So one thing I wanted to share was about, a lot of people don't realize this, but during 1918 to 1920, when we had the issues with the Spanish flu, is my time up? Oh, sorry. She didn't We've have got my time. time. We've got um, When we had this, I know, let's see. Give you a couple more minutes, okay? Okay. I don't know, I was born, I don't know if anybody here was born, none of us were here born to hit in here. I'm sorry, I'm getting emotional. But during 1980 to 1920, okay, bacterial pneumonia was the biggest killer, the Spanish flu. Back then, if you really do the research and don't use Google, okay, there are papers, and I shared this information on the Ohio County Public Schools where you posted the new mask information, okay, or somebody did, whoever posted it. I shared a lot of data and links. 
okay? Everybody back then was wearing dirty, nasty masks. That is what killed so many people. That's what killed them. Seriously. Okay, face masks. I got information from Stanford University, a lot from the NIH, National Institute of Health, and lots of other places. And I made this chart. Stanford University in California in April of this year was quoted to say that masks are dirty, dehumanizing, and ineffective. Another thing, the SARS-CoV-2 virus is 60 to 140 nanometers, okay? A nanometer is extremely small, smaller than we can really imagine, okay? The width of one piece of hair, and I brought some hair. I may have lost it already. <laughs> I brought some hair, okay, to show you. It's in my seat. I brought some hair to show you. A piece of hair is 100,000 nanometers in width, okay? 100,000 nanometers. Can you imagine? But the SARS-CoV virus is only 60 to 140, all right? You take this mask, it's right here. I've seen pictures from when people wore a mask when they got their hair cut. Pieces of hair in your mask. Okay? These masks, when we put them on, they're not sealed. They're not sealed. Viral particles can get right through these and through the cloth. Okay? I just wanted to share that. And I shared more detail about that. The virus and influenza virus as well, these virons, the viral particles, are a thousand times smaller than the thread sizes in this mask, the cloth mask, they're not effective, okay? But what they are effective at doing, they're causing psychological, physiological, and adverse health effects, okay? The news channels are not gonna tell you this. They're not telling people, but there are articles that tell us. I posted something in a no mask mandate group there were at least 30 parents that commented about how many of their children are having headaches and migraines and are grouchy and upset. But we want our kids in school because they like their teachers. They want to see their friends, you know? Now some other information I have, I talked about the headaches and migraines. They're breathing in their own breath over and over and over. You know, they're breathing in those other germs. Okay, and many parents want a choice. Now, the other things I wrote down that, okay, and this is not to be ugly. Okay, I talked about the data, the censorship. This is not to be ugly. But you guys as decision makers, have any of you all ridden on the buses when they're 90 degrees in a mask? Nope. Have you ridden on a bus the longest route where I live? Where I live? Ten minutes. Where I live, children get on the bus at six thirty in the morning. They don't get off the bus until four o'clock in the afternoon. Okay, they don't get but about a fifteen-minute break all day from taking off a mask. So a lot of us want to know if you decision makers. Would you wear a mask in 90 degree weather in the afternoons? We want you, we want you all not to be mean. We want you all to do this. We want you to see what five year olds are doing. We want you to see what our teenagers who are already having so many hormonal issues. We want you to do that. And thank you for your time. Thank you. what a hundred hundred thousand nanometers are okay <coughs> Jeff Whittinghill good evening Mr. Southern and board I appreciate this opportunity uh, what can I do? 
I am actually from Butler County, but I've been a sub here in Ohio County for the last two or three years. Uh, I'm going straight. Uh, of course, we know that emotion doesn't equal truth, and one death is too many, an adult or a child. Uh, and you may be aware or not be aware, but uh, uh, one of your faculty passed away this afternoon, Lisa Butler. Went to, school, went to church with her many years, and it's, it's a sad tragedy. We had that on nobody. But again, in a sinful fallen world, uh, you know, we're in a spiritual battle. Uh, but all we have to handle, I always like to start out with something funny. So these scientists get together and they decide they're smarter than God. So, of course, all of them don't go to God. They just elect one guy to go to God. So the one scientist goes to God and he says, God, you know, you know, we've just got so smart that we just don't need you anymore. So uh, God says, oh, okay, you know how God's full of mercy and grace. And he says, okay. So he says, okay, let's, let's have a contest. Well, a man making contest. And God says, I'll let you go first. He says, okay. So the scientist reaches down, gets him a handful of dirt, and God says, uh uh uh, get your own dirt. And that's where we're at in our society. Man has got too big for his britches. Uh, like I said, this is a spiritual divide. They want to divide us, people that you care about, your family, your friends. And like the lady there pointed out, there's a lot of misinformation. You know, the, the devil, you know, I appreciate you praying, but we also have to follow the scriptures as we pray. And the fact is, the devil's doing all he can to, to kick up dust because he knows his time's getting short. Uh, and of course, when this all first started, you know, everybody didn't know what was going on. And, but as it come along, you got more information, and it's kind of the old saying, uh, fool me once, shame on you. Fool me twice, shame on me. And as the lady says, we don't get enough information that's truly uh, the truth, and we make a lot of wrong or bad decisions. Uh, just like God says in Ecclesiastes 1.9, there's nothing new under the sun. When He created man and woman in the garden, you know, He, he gave us everything we need to take care of. There wasn't anything that surprised him. Uh, so as I speak today, uh, I'm no better than any of you. I mean, like I said, most of you don't know me personally. Uh, but again, just like in Ezekiel 33, 1-9, it says, The watchman alerts the people the enemy coming. and if he does that, the blood's off his hands. But if he doesn't, the blood is on his hands. So it's very important that you get to the bottom of the truth and not a lot of lies. And we know that the, a lot of the media is on the the side of evil. We don't like to think that people are evil in this world, but the people that are behind the curtains are, are very evil and trying to uh, lead us down. So if you really want to take care of this problem, the immune system is not really being talked about at all. If you truly want to be healthy, you have to take care of your immune system, and that's a choice. There's men and women that fought, died, and bled for our freedoms to be able to say, I don't want to be Muslim. Don't have to be Muslim. That's why they went to the war, especially when it's uh, based on false information. So you know, if you really want to build a new system, fresh air, sunshine, vitamin C, zinc, D3, fresh fruits and vegetables. And if you choose not to do that, I, I would love every one of you to do that. But if you choose not to, there's consequences. And that's the thing about it. If the children are really in no position. They're, they're relying on adults with the muzzles and all that. Misinformation is kind of like what's going on in society now. Uh, you put a, a pan of water on a stove, put a frog in it, turn it up little by little, eventually the frog fries itself because it adapts. You take that same uh, pot of water, boil it, throw a frog in it, it jumps right out. That's what's being done to us right now. There's a guy named Andy Andrews that wrote a book that says, How you kill 11 million people? He lied to them. And that's what they did to the Jews. And if you don't think that's not what's going on, that's exactly what's going on right now. Corruption. Uh, yeah, society. And corruption. Oh, corruption. Okay. Yeah. Uh, but anyway, again, uh, the enemy is about false narratives. And uh, again, uh, you know, they want us to fight among ourselves and to be sided. Oh, you know, especially when you don't know somebody personally. You think, What's he doing coming for saying this? But, I mean, I care about every one of you. Like I said, Jesus Christ, the perfect man himself, would like everyone to go to heaven. Well, why don't they? They have a free will. I mean, he doesn't, you know, he says, here I am. I've bled and died on the cross for you. You know, you choose me or you reject me. And that's that's the most important decision we'll ever make in this life. But on the, the second tier is, is our physical health. And 
you know, God would like uh, every one of us to be healthy. 3 John 2, He does not only want us to be spiritually strong, but physically strong. Uh, so anyway, I think uh, I didn't take my time to put it up, but uh, the bottom line is to, to get the, the, the right thing of what's going on here. It is a spiritual battle. It's to get the, the facts and, and what's really going on. And I know that everybody in family, you know, they're, they're pulled a hundred different directions. I have three adult children. I have a little more time than most. Uh, health has always been my passion, so uh, you know I've dug a little deeper than most. Uh, but uh, in the end, uh, you know, we didn't create truth. We can't change truth, but we answer the truth. And uh, I appreciate the, the opportunity to, to speak to the board and to. Uh, uh, the only thing I would have asked is that you would let us vote before you voted to see like that you didn't care about what we said, I guess. Because, I mean, that's an action that's kind of, to me, blatant to say, okay, yeah. we've done made a decision, don't care what y'all say. I can. Because it's kind of like what's going on before with the governor. And I'll end with this. Uh, the governor's been wrong many times. Of course, the courts finally pulled him in on some of that stuff. But uh, if somebody came in with children, somebody came into your house nightly and abused your child, and you didn't know about it, and somebody told you, wouldn't you stop them? Of course you would. You love your child. You would die for your child. But a lot of things that have went on is basically uh, around the child abuse. And like she shared a lot of it. And uh, again, I appreciate the opportunity to speak. Lloyd, I'd like for you to know that I understand your position and I understand all your all positions here. But we as board members have to do what's best for all of the children in our county, not just a few. And we are respectful of your thoughts and your fears. And I want you to understand that. That is part of it. I have cancer. I'm not going to be here much longer. But I have grandchildren in school that I can't see because of this pandemic. But they want to wear masks because they want to be in school. And we cannot afford, now this is my personal opinion, <coughs> and these people know I don't always sit up here and be very quiet, so tonight I'm not going to. These children need to be in class. We cannot afford to lose another year of education out of these children's lives. Last year did not work. It was pitiful. If your child learns something, your child is very, very smart. You know, NTI didn't work, virtual didn't work, in my opinion. I saw what my grandchildren went through. But we have to do what we think is best for all our children. And believe you me, I've spent a lot of days and mornings and nights praying about this. And yes, we could have waited till after you all spoke to vote. But we had a consensus on the board, and we had talked about this, and this is what we feel is best for all the kids in Ohio County. Are any of us allowed to speak still? Or no? It ain't no matter. Yeah, I'll be brief. Uh, overall, instruction is off to a good start this school year. Uh, today, I believe, was day 26. Uh, so we're just five weeks in. or just a little over five weeks in. Obviously, we're having to deal with some positives and, and some quarantines, but thankfully, with the three-fit rule, most of the time in the classrooms, we can keep that distance. We're really just having to look at lunch and activities such as that. Um, I will also say those numbers, even though they're higher than this year, or last year rather, they've been manageable and we've been able to still function each and every day. I know some districts have had to close and shut down. We have never, in my opinion, been to that point. Um, but numbers have been higher this year than last year. And as the gentleman said, 
Um, you know, I'd shared with you all in the text message today, certainly our hearts and prayers go out to the Butler family and um, what has occurred with Miss Lisa. Uh, that's tragic. And also continue to remember the Butler family because it's my understanding that maybe her husband is not doing very well and is now in the hospital as well. So just continue praying for them, for their losses, and let's hope that their losses don't continue, that it would cease and that he would recover. And um, it, it's tragic. It's tragic anytime you lose anyone and it certainly hurts and stings when it's one in your own family, your own district. Um, she was just working on the bus uh, the Friday before the holiday. And uh, here it is now, less than two weeks later, and she's gone, and it's, uh, it's tragic. So remember, please remember that family in your prayers. That's all I have, Mr. Chairman. All right. All right, wait, do we have a closed session? We do have a reason for closed right, session. Motion going to closed session for KRS 61.810. Any motion? Make it. Any motion? We have a second. All in favor? We're in closed session.